Praise the Lord. We thank God so much. We'd like to welcome all of you to this evening's edition of Campus Quenonia Time with the Generals. Uh, before we go into the session, can we have a word of prayer? Almighty God, we are grateful. We thank you so much for how you are using Campus Quenonia Time with the Generals to be such a great blessing to us as a campus ministry. We pray that this afternoon, you will help us to get the best from you as we go into and appreciating the history of our campus ministry. We pray that you will use our resource persons to really open our eyes and also to challenge us. So we'll be able to rise up to the occasion and also make a difference in our own time. We pray that you will help every one of us to appreciate uh, the essence of this exercise. And I pray that we'll not sit down. We will do something so that we can also make a contribution towards the advancement of the campus ministry and the church as a whole in Jesus' name. Be with us as we continue. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Okay, we started with a few choruses um, being led by Sister Esther Mice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, as we're about to go into a time of choruses, I just want to remind us that the Bible says in Psalm 9 verse 2, that I'll be glad and rejoice in thee. I'll sing praise to thy name, O thou most high God. Today, even as we're about to praise the name of the Lord, I want us to open our hearts and sing to the glory of the Lord. Amen. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song and praise his name for the Lord is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, hallelujah, blessed, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, hallelujah, blessed, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. 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 
Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. He is able, abundantly able, to deliver and to say, my God is able, abundantly able. To deliver those who trust in him, trusting him, he is able, abundantly able to deliver and to say, our God is able, abundantly able. To deliver those who trust in Him. We are here again. We are here again. Lord, we are here again. Holy Ghost, we are here again. Amen. We are here again. We are here again. Lord, we are here again. Holy Ghost, we are here again. Amen. We are here again. Lord, we are here again. Holy Ghost, we are here again. Amen. Dwelling together. How happy we shall be throughout eternity, for we shall dwell together my lord and i dwelling together how happy we shall be throughout eternity for we shall dwell together my lord and i Dwelling together, how happy we shall be throughout eternity, for we shall dwell together, my Lord and I. Amen. Amen. Campus Pannonia time with the general. For those of you who have been following us the past few weeks, we've been engaging with the leadership of the church to understand the history of deeper life in Ghana. Uh, we've been engaging with our overseers uh, to share with us their own experiences, especially their ministerial journey and uh, what the campus church can learn from the sacrifices that they have made 
over the past decades. We are hoping that uh, these experiences we are hearing will challenge the younger generation to go to the point of even considering full-time ministry in the church. Um, we've talked to the National Overseer, who shared his passion with us, uh, especially his desire to get the campus church play a more critical role in advancing the church going forward. We've also had interactions with the regional overseer for Kumasi South, Pastor Osei Wusu, who has also challenged us that a time has come for the campus ministry um, to be involved in moving the church forward. Today, we are very privileged to have somebody who has been really instrumental when it comes to campus work in Ghana. Um, through his own personal involvement in, in the start of campus work in Ghana and his own achievement in academia, we believe that he's the right person to share with us um, what deeper life campus fellowship used to be, the people who really led uh, the rapid growth of campus ministry in Ghana, and also to share his own perspective about what role the campus church can play in driving the growth of the church uh, in the next decade. So tonight we are very honored to have Professor Joseph Sarkodie Ado and the wife, Mama Mary Sarkodie Ado, uh, who will be talking to and um, allowing them to share their own personal experiences with us and what their vision for the campus church is. To do this as usual, we have our moderator for today, uh, Dr. Mrs. Hisamwate, uh, who will be asking our special guest um, very interesting questions. We will also encourage you um, to type in any questions you have, either if you're joining us on Zoom, you can do that in the chat. If you're joining us on YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, you also can um, type in your questions or comments uh, in our uh, comment section. So thank you very much. And uh, at this point, I'm going to hand over to our moderator. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for another edition of Campus Koinonia and time with the generals. By the grace of God, we have been learning so much from this series um, of Campus Koinonia. And as I keep saying, um, the first lesson which we gathered was that there is no shortcut to spirituality, that we need to sow into our, spirit, our lives. We need to sow in tears and reap in joy so that we can be grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. We also learned that we need to trust God to give us the right brother or the right sister so we can fulfill God's plan for our lives. And um, we also learned that if you want to do the work of God, first of all, you must sacrifice yourself and you, the Lord himself will take over and do the work and also bless you in return. So all these wonderful nuggets we Today, we are privileged to have another general with us, uh, the, a general of the Campus Fellowship in Ghana. campus congresses or maybe at a strategic congress but today we want to know you better so we want you to tell us about yourself 
your where you come from, your upbringing and education. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, like you said, my name is Jesus Sakodiado. Um, I come from a village in Kwabre district called called Nkwandakesi. It's about 13 miles Kumasi of Insu Road and a branch at a certain village. Um, I started schooling by the primary school in the where my father was uh, kind of having cocoa farm there, and we were the pioneers of that primary school. Uh, that's uh, some about 20 miles from Ofensu. And um, so we started the school there, and um, at class three, uh, I was brought to my hometown to continue the primary school. And uh, I went to the middle school, and then um, sat for the uh, common entrance at that time examination. My past went to the market the second school at Offensive. The first year I was a day student because my parents didn't have the money to send me to the boarding house. And uh, by God's grace, second year I uh, won uh, at that time is uh, it was Ghana Cocoa, Cocoa Marketing Board, Ghana Cocoa Board. Uh, scholarship, so I moved to the boarding house, and um, that was uh, 1974. So I continued to 1978 when I finished. Now, if you want to, since you want to know me, me more, <coughs> from five I was the school prefect, yeah. and then I I did science and agriculture, and I had distinction. Uh, uh, after that, I went to Ghana Secondary School in Tamale. For my sixth form, and I also passed. So, 1978 80, I was there. So, 1980, I gained admission to Faculty of Agriculture, the K University, to do a four year degree course in agriculture. I did also my best, and then, um, instead of graduating in 1984, we graduated in 1985 because there was one year task force. No, task force, we had to go and carry cocoa, mm. uh, that will lock up in the hinterland. And, uh, uh, under, the rule, under the rule of uh, when he came to power, I think uh, that's a uh, uh, president always. So we finished it in five for first class uh, for degree, and uh, initially I was picked up as a teaching assistant, no, assistant lecturer. But after, before I had the interview, they said they have abolished that decision, that post. So I was related to teach, teaching assistant. I was there as 19, um, 1985 to September 1988 when I gained a common scholarship to go and do my master's in, at the University of Guelph in Canada. So 1988, I finished 91, came back in 92, and I was employed as a lecturer at K University Faculty of Agriculture. Um, I taught for from 1992 to 1997, when I gained another British Commonwealth Scholarship to go and do my PhD in agronomy at the Y College. Uh, uh, before I finished the Y College, I uh, metamorphosed to Imperial College. Okay. So my, my degree is now in Imperial, so I was there by Imperial College, London. Came back in 19, uh, sorry, that's from 19, uh, 1997 to 2001. So I came back in 2002 uh, to continue my lectureship at uh, K University, Faculty of Agriculture. Um, before then, 19, uh, 1988, I got married to my wife. Uh, that was uh, 9th July 1988. So we moved to, Can we traveled to Canada on the same day. We came back. And then when we were going to uh, this in Britain also, well, I left and then uh, I think two months time, she and the children came and then joined us. So we have been together since. I have four children, two boys and two girls. I think Yes, thank all. you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I was privileged to meet Pastor when I was in third year in 2002. And... Uh, 
uh, we have a lot uh, to share this evening. So yeah, welcome once again to Time with the Generals. And today we have Pastor and Professor Joseph Sarkodie Addo. We have just uh, heard about his, his, his background, his education, and uh, what he's been doing all these years. Now we want to know our mommy too. Mom, mom, we always call her Mama Sack <laughs> or Mama Mary. So, mommy, we want to know you better. We want to know uh, where you come from and your growing up and education and everything. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sister Peace. Um, I come from, my name is Mary Sacco Diadu, and I come from Salt Pond. Um, I was born in Kumasi and I went to school majorly there. Um, I started my preschool in Tamale because my father was a policeman and he was being transferred here and there. So we found ourselves there. So that's where I started my uh, preschool. After that, we moved in uh, to Kumasi and I continued with my schooling in Asokore Mampo. From there, I went to Ameko, continued my primary education there. And then as one the girls, we had a, it was a girls school. So I was there from form one to when I, I form four. After that, I gained admission to Kongo Master Secondary School, where I had my O and A levels. Along the way, I lost my father. So um, continuing my education was difficult. That is after Form 5. And so my uncle opted to help me until I finished um, A level. Then from there, I decided to look for some work to do to support myself and then uh, my siblings. So it led me to a pharmaceutical company where I trained as a secretary. And then later I gained um, employment at um, SSB Bank. That was formerly SSB Bank, now it's APSA Bank. And I was at, I was transferred to Dumuka. So why is there? It was during that time that I came in to contact with um, Deeper Life. <laughs> It was at um, Dunkwa. So from Dunkwa, I decided to go to Bible school at Lagos. I, I had to resign um, impromptu to the extent that because my going to Bible school wasn't affiliated with banking work. So I lost all my entitlement. And at the bank's head office at Accra, I had to stand there and then write my resignation letter there and there and hand it over to them because that week we were going to Lagos to start our uh, training at IBCT. IBCT, yeah. Yeah. Is that all? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mommy. Wow. <laughs> so Mommy has moved around quite a bit, quite a lot. Uh, and uh, I believe all these uh, kind of prepared you for all the work that you have been doing all these years. So we want to hear from Pastor. Pastor, we want to know how you met with the Lord Jesus and uh, how you were able to develop your spiritual life. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, in 1983, as I said, we were doing the task force uh, at Offensive. We were at Offensive because that was the, the, the district that was closest to me. And I had friends there, so I went to stay there. And um, so we finished the task force, came back to my village. And then that was about August 83. I, there was one person, one young man I knew, in fact, I'm older than him, that's why I'm saying young man, in, the, in, the, in our village. We were, we were in the primary school, middle school together. And uh, we knew one another. And uh, after school, he, he went to Lagos. But I, I really didn't know that he went to Lagos. So when he came back to the village, 
uh, uh, in a village in 1983, I shall say. I saw his life. I said, ah, you call him Brother Ajima. This is not Brother Ajima, we all knew. Ajima, we all knew. I mean, you know, bad boys, you know. <laughs> and so, so his life became a challenge to me. And I mean, I couldn't stand his life. Anytime I meet him outside, I say, hmm, this person has something I need. So I remember one day we met him, I met him in the town and I said, oh, uh, please, can you come and share the word of God with you? So he obliged to come. I don't know uh, the distance between when I told him and when he came, but he came. And I remember I went to the local primary school. There was a shed there for the next week. They were starting this week. We sat there. So he gave me the gospel. And I received the gospel because already I had seen that there is something in his life that I needed. So when he told me that it was Jesus, I opened my, my, my heart there and there. Uh, for, uh, for for the Lord. So, uh, since we are in the European school, we were still in town, we were going to the nearest town for Bible study. That's a Hindu on the things we did. So, we walked through the village, the, some, uh, the food path, and cocoa farm, and all those things. And when we close and we are coming, we'll be walking along the uh, main road to our home and then to my, 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 my village. So that is where, and the, and the brothers who were teaching us and who were ahead of us, I mean, Bible, they could really, really study to poor Bible. So I also decided that, no, 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 I have to also do something. So I was really reading the Bible, really reading the Bible, reading the Bible. And at that time, I didn't have Bible, read Bible. So when we came back to, we came to school, and I was going on holidays. I, one of my supervisor, Professor Safkan Tanka, had a good study Bible, and I borrowed it. He graciously gave it to me. Went back to the house, I was reading and reading and reading and reading. We're going to Bible and uh, the Bible study, as I said, that I can grow. So these are all things that, by the grace of God, help us to start on a firm foundation, and our. Our test desire for God was also very great at that time. So anything I had got, I read and followed them. And I mean, whatever they will say, I will just believe it. And I, I think this is the, the beginning, how we started. And how we started by the grace of God. God bless you, Pastor. I think, uh, Brother Ajima, wherever you are, you are grateful for your life. Your life was a book before their eyes. And people read through and through, and it pointed them to the Lord Jesus Christ. So God bless you. If you, you. happen to chance on this video today, we are all grateful to you for the, your life of Christ that you displayed. And that brought our pastor to the Lord. And to, we have all been blessed by his ministry. Mommy, we also want to know, um, you mentioned earlier that you had to resign from your job to go to IBTC, which meant that something happened in between, which, which, which so transformed you and then gave you that um, enthusiasm to, to take that bold step to resign from your job. Today, if somebody works in the bank, it's not easy to, for that person to leave the bank. So we want to hear what happened. How did you meet with the Lord Jesus? Thank you very much. Let me go back to where I first got saved. Um, I got saved during my secondary education. When my father died, it was very traumatic um, for me, in the sense that it, it, it was like I was so frustrated and I didn't understand God. Why? So many students, in, and it was only me. He has to kill my father. So why is in that uh, kind of situation, there was a, a, a student who came to our school, and that student, her lifestyle was very, 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 um, I have not known anybody like that, because she was in the SU and she was being teased and then tossed here and there, but that lady maintained her calm and was always so peaceful, despite what was being done to her. 
So I told myself that this girl is just playing uh, drama. So I will go to her um, dormitory, sit in somebody's um, bed and be watching her mm -hmm. to see whether I can find some fault mm -hmm. uh, in her life. But I couldn't. So eventually I was won over. I had to go to God and tell God that God, there's something in this lady that I don't have. Please save me from my sins. I remember that day very well. Because at that time I was the um, I was the assistant girls prefect, and I had to I, and we had our own um, apartment that was uh, it wasn't that much crowded, so I had time to pray and tell God that you should do something for me. I know that with my situation, there's no way I, I can make it to um, heaven. So through that time, the lady was in SU, and then. I started attending SU meetings. And they were very good in the sense that they followed me uh, very well. They did follow up on me very ser uh, seriously. When I was in school and then I embraced Christianity, I knew my parents mm -hmm. that when we uh, vacate and go home, my thought was, how am I going to continue with this new birth? New, this new experience I've gotten. And it was very fearful to me because I knew in the house I would not be able to um, just live up the new fun faith I have found. So when we vacated, the leaders um, at SU in our school, they were visiting me very much. This one would come have Bible studies with me. So it prepared my parents to know and then see the change that has come to my life. So I started going to the local meetings around that they took me there and they really followed me up. And so that made me to stand firm in my faith. It was around that time that I found myself um, working at um, Dubuqua uh, in the bank. So whilst there, I was living with a pastor who also really helped me and all the, uh, the the problems I had because I had problem with um, jewelry and all those kind of issues. Uh, as a banker, I knew how to dress very well. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard about deeper life and then the addresses, I I used to mock, mm -hmm. and I never thought that I could be one of them. But then when I started reading the Bible and then they taught me, me about worldliness and kids. You know, before I moved from Kumasi to Dukwa, I have bought myself jewels, a lot of them, and then my dressing, and I had to bury them under a tree yeah. because I realized I couldn't give it out to anybody. Something you don't want, you cannot give it out to someone. So around that time, God really helped me. But I think the basic thing that helped me was the way I was followed up. They took me um, during evangelism um, around the uh, Kumasi, and even when they were having camping, I was there. And then I was also in a singing group at that time called Kupsia, and we were ministering through singing in various churches around Kumasi. So I got um, really well grounded. But on Holiness and then the Holy Spirit baptism. It was when I came to deeper life, I really understood that doctrine and realized that with that holiness, no one shall see the Lord. And so that's what helped me to really stand. And then because of the garden I had in evangelism and follow up, I also knew that that work is very important. If we need to make people to stay in, in the church and also to stay in Christ, we have to make sure that we follow them up very well and show them how the love of Christ is. Thank you so much, Mommy. This is another testimony of a radiant Christian life. And look at our Mommy today and look at that wherever this uh, woman of God is. God richly bless you for portraying that life of Christ. And the SU, the whole entire, the SU team that was following her up, you have really done a good work because we can testify that the Lord through our mommy really has blessed us. God bless you. So, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, 
you are listening to us and watching us um, on time with the generals. And so we are interacting with our pastor and our mommy. Pastor, we want to again find out. Um, so I have known you for close to 20 years and I'm sure for some people even more. And I remember on campus those days when you came back, you, you used to preach and you would say that this heaven, we must go. Even if I have to hold your hand and carry you to heaven, I will do it. And that enthusiasm is still the same till today. Pastor, how do you do it? How, how do you manage to keep the temple? Uh, <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, well, by the grace of God, uh, my background was Catholic. I knew what you were being taught there, what you were doing over there. I mean, some of us were even local preachers, but what we were doing there. So when we tasted this real life of, of Christ, uh, we, we, we had a, a person, I'm going to say, I, I had a really, really kind of, I, I, as I said, I was reading everything, devouring everything. And even to today, to today, I'm reading so much Bible. And maybe the book I read, I read most uh, is, is the Bible. So I, I, I and then also uh, the teachings of the church, holiness, righteousness, Heaven, always they will be mentioning heaven, giving testimonies about those who through one for one thing or the other missed heaven, went to hell. I mean, the teaching was there, the messages were there, and then and then the examples also were also so clear to us. So my desire at that from right from the beginning is that well, I have to also develop study develop and even though I didn't have any uh, kind of uh, vision or I didn't have any kind I was not uh, kind of looking for becoming a leader or no, no no my basic aim was to develop myself and to get to heaven and uh, by the grace of God when I became a leader uh, the same thing uh, the, like you we are saying so as I say even after we this thing just uh, pull you on the ground. We do that because when you get to heaven and we look at people we have taught, people we started uh, this fellowship with, and I know maybe there will be a question on that. So I will, I will, I will, I will that they have they abandoned it on the way and people's life are not what they ought to be. My mind is that. We need to help these people. And of course, we cannot help people when we are not standing on the solid ground. So this prepared, this prepared me to read and study and pray. And by the grace of God, uh, that's, that's how far God has brought me. That's how far God has brought us. So again, this nugget we have learned is so uh, ringing that there is no shortcut to spirituality. You need to sow in tears. Read the Bible. Pastor said the best book he reads is the Bible. And so the message is for us also. The best book to read is the Bible. And then the teachings of the church is what has helped him to maintain this zeal and commitment in serving the Lord. So Pastor, now we want to go back to history. Go down the memory lane and we want to understand how Campus Church in Ghana started. Campus Fellowship DLCF in Ghana start, started. Thank you very much. As um, in nine, okay, so in December nineteen eighty three, unfortunately, I was still in the village. I was not able to attend the retreat at that time. The retreat was held at Pembe College, but in uh, April two nineteen eighty four, we had come back to school. Okay. So the retreat, at, the April retreat was held at a Polytechnic, now Technical University. I remember that very well. They are old uh, uh, dining hall, and then few of us were sitting in between these two buildings there because we were not many. And um, after the me after the, I don't know it, whether it was after the program or one day during the program during break. At that time, the national, the, the national, Pastor Gidi, 
because he also his background was in the campus and all this, he really loved the campus work. So after the during as, as I said during the program, he called all the university students who were there at the program to have a meeting. So when he we went to that meeting, then he told us the vision for the campus that he has been a campus leader in Lagos before GS sent him there. So he is very, very, uh, very much enthusiastic about the fellowship. So we should go and do something. So that's the challenge he said before us. And at that time, uh, I cannot remember many people but myself, uh, Dr. Abrokwa, who just retired as a plastic surgeon in 37, and brother one brother Percy, and then one brother Victor Egan. Victor Egan was a, uh, and he's still Pentecost, but he was very committed to uh, the, because of the teaching and all those things. And these are the brethren I can remember, so few of us. So when we came back to campus, we had a meeting and said, well, this is what our pastor has charged us, so we should do something. So at least those of us who went to the retreat, we started a fellowship. And then uh, we were inviting some other people. And as I said, Brother Egan was bringing some other Pentecost people into, into our Bible studies. And then I remember those days, Pastor Jide himself used to come. We were having the fellowship. We started at the Unity Hall Chapel. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Jide himself, many times would come, sometimes would come and teach us Bible. And then the... Those who were ahead of me, I mean, Brother Broca, he's also my village, uh, village, village, same, from same village. He, they were more Christian uh, ahead of me. So they were seniors. They were leading the Bible study and we were learning and all those kind of stuff. Uh, so, so that's how we started the campus fellowship work at, at K University. And I, I am thinking that was the first campus fellowship that was started. And uh, so we, we went there. Unfortunately, uh, it was like just like a men's fellowship. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there was no sister there, but uh, I, I, unfortunately, oh, I don't know what else to say, fortunately. But we didn't mind. Mm -hmm. we, not, we didn't mind. Not that we didn't mind because there was no sister. We were happy. I mean, we were reading the Bible. We were saying, all we wanted to do is to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those the beginning, these are the beginning, and then later on, some brethren came, Brother Omona, I, I remember him, that brother, he, I don't know, it pained me that he went back to the world. One of the of our leaders there deceived him uh, at Koforidia and sent them out of the church. Today I don't find Brother Omona again, I don't hear from him. Then uh, another bash came, Brother Uredu. And then his senior brother, brother, his junior brother, brother, Jujan Fi Redu, also came. And then, uh, and then the fellowship was was moving on, moving on, moving on until Sister Julie came. I think 1986 or seven. Uh, Sister Julie former Sister Julie Anafojo came to do diploma, yeah. and then he finished, went to work a bit, came back to do degree. And, and, and so, so, so this were moving on. This things were moving on, and by the grace of God, as I said, I left them in 18, 1988, Went for four years, came back, and the fellowship has grown. We have grown, and I, I, I really thank God at that time. And Brabache, Kambache, and those other people who held the fort. Uh, had really done well. So at those days we were meeting at uh, African Hall Chapel because that was a bit larger than Unity Hall Chapel. And then uh, we continued uh, uh, with them and uh, moving on, moving on. And as I said, went back 1997, came back 2000, 2001 or 2002, 2001. And I was happy. I mean, very, very, I mean, look at the, where we started with no sister. And when I came back 2002, some sisters were there and they were fervent and all those kind of stuff. And people who have, by the grace of God, started together and all those kind of, I mean, this is a brief history of how, and that's, you know, we see 
at that time was very, very uh, particular about the campus policy. Mm -hmm. All the encouragement we needed, all the challenges, we, all the challenge we needed, he put before us. And then, uh, so he was very, very helpful yes. for the establishment of the campus fellowship at K University. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Master. Mm -hmm. So DLC of KNUSC was the first campus fellowship at KNUSC. Yes. Wow. In in our church. First, first, uh, first campus sorry. fellowship in Ghana. Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. So how was it like looking for a place? How did you secure permission? Uh, because these days it's very hard to. Find. Yeah. Remember those days? Nineteen nineteen was nineteen eighty four. The fellowships were not as plenty as we have today. Okay. Today we have almost about 100 and <laughs> others are still <laughs> seeking to, to be registered. So Unity Hall, uh, count, uh, this Unity Hall, uh, this in chapel was too small for uh, big fellowships like uh, Methodist, Presby, okay. Pentecost. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so at that time, it was not difficult at all. It was, and unfortunately, even at that time, we didn't. We were all students, okay. so there was nobody like uh, we can say uh, hide behind a lecturer mm -hmm. going to see. It. So, so I think we didn't have problem. Mm -hmm. I think we just applied, and they gave mm -hmm. to us. Okay. And they gave the, the the chapel to to us because I think that day we were meeting or we requested no also other fellowship was yes, meeting yes. there. So we didn't encounter so much problem on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the, taking up the challenge Pastor Jide gave you and your team and you were able to start something that we also came to meet and it is still standing and made even bigger than it is mm -hmm. and uh, it was at that time. So um Mommy, we, we want to understand as regional campus uh, women's coordinator, what 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 is your role in particular? Thank you very much, my sister. Um, the work among the sisters in the campus ministry that is Kumasi Sab, it entails a lot. Um, I will talk about uh, the opportunities first. Um, there are always a lot of people that God will bring along your way. That means the word of God. So in bringing sinners to Christ is an opportunity. And there's also that, uh, uh, that opportunity of leading um, believers. You know, I, in the campus setting, many of these uh, sisters, you know, some of them, they cannot stand because of the pressure of uh, the other students and also if you are a deeper life member, what you go through because of addressing, uh, they, it, it, it's easier for them to hide their identity. So that edge and then the opportunity to, uh, to tell them to move on. People are around them and then we are praying for them. It's a ministry in itself. Mm -hmm. And then we, so, with these two um, opportunities, I've said there are a lot more. It brings about challenges. So how do you meet their needs individually and then as a group? So I developed something like mentoring of the um, oldest and mature sisters, the, lead, the sister leaders, and they, because they're level head of people, when they come, huh, if you don't take good care of them, you see them, even if they identify themselves, then it's a problem. So if you get them, if you don't take care, they will slip through your fingers like that. At the end of the year, the sisters that um, uh, were in the church, we see them that the numbers are diminishing and diminishing. So we had such um, uh, mentorship groups that were, they took the sisters one by one. Every leader has his own sister, he is mentoring, and, he, and then they will bring a reports to me or to their immediate um, leaders and we're having some programs other mentally or family meeting to discuss how far we can go on and then the other campuses also they have their 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 women leaders there so normally what we do is phone them we are on a whatsapp group and so if there's anything we just pass it around and then we tell them how they have to follow up the success 
and then any need. We have had opportunities of helping sisters who are financially down to the extent that, let me say this one, the addresses are not good and they have heard the word of God, they know, but there is not enough money for them to do that. I had to assign somebody to take them to town, let them choose the materials they want, take them to the suitors to choose the style, but to make sure that it is decent and covers the, we have to do all those issues. And then that role also, we, um, uh, we plan programs for them, not only on the spiritual side. Practicals like, you know, they bring the things they are instead, uh, interested in. And then we try to find uh, people who can help them in those uh, needs that they have. And that's how by those days we have been going on. Yet. Thank you so much. I remember we learned how to, we learned how to make tie and dye. Tie and dye, yes. that's one. <laughs> Yeah. And it was so beautiful. Yes. And mm. I, I think um, I made some for myself. So for about five years after that, I was we're still using them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we learned a lot through uh, DLC of uh, KNUST. In fact, we make a sister's program. We, we usually don't miss it. It's, uh, it's always a wonderful time. And I believe that it's still a wonderful time. And we'll continue to make it a wonderful time. So, what's that? Mm -hmm. um, Mobilizing people in 1984 compared to mobilizing people today, what, what strategies will work better for us or best? Hmm. Well, I am thinking that every time has its own challenge. Yes. I remember in 1984, the few of us who were there, as I said, we started. Fine, it was fine. At least among the we were not successful among the sisters, the ladies, but among the brothers ourselves, we were we were we were doing some some things. So we had some people, other people joining us. Even though some will come one day, they will come back again, and all those kind of stuff. And then um, and 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 I am thinking that the secret at that time, and also even it applies today, is the commitment of the few people. As you said, uh, Dr. Broca was very, very high in Christianity. Brother Percy, I started, I said earlier on fine. Brother Victor Egan was was was, was just dynamic. So uh, the, the 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 commitment was there. And those days, uh, like one of the said, when they went to deeper life, those with this and this, they see that the message will hit them. But when they come back, they say, but this is the word of God. We can't uh, relegate it, so you should try. So they will go back again. That's why they stayed. So so, so the commitment was there. The seed was there. And uh, we, we saw, at that time, I mean, and of course, also probably, probably, of course, that's not a excuse anyway. Probably in those days, we were single, no wife, no children, nothing. So all our, this is, Let's let's pour it out. Yeah, let's use the term for the kingdom work. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though, as I said, it's not children have come, wife have come, husbands have come. Doesn't mean we should lower our commitment. But definitely, there were some things we may not be able to go as far as we were at those days. But I think over there and today is the commitment, is the commitment in the heart of the people. Because if somebody is so committed to go and understand the Bible and know that if a sinner dies and he is going to hell and you are born again and you know the responsibility God has given to us, all these factors coming together will make you to be able to go out and, and do something. I mean, I said it in the, uh, Latin, the, was the last regional congress there. And then the brother, brother, that when the brother said, Ah, when we were drinking sugar, we were. But that day, I mean, as I said, choir, we were in the choir, so we sing morning service, sing afternoon service, leave there about 11 30 when Pastor Jesus is going to give the second message. By the time we traveled back to, I traveled back to KNOST, I, I knew I was hungry. Mm -hmm. and, but I knew that I have to go and lead African Hall because at that time, Sister Julie had come and by the grace of God, he had been able to gather some 
pick some of the ladies there. And this is not something we were looking for the opportunity. And the opportunity had come, of course, do at a cost. So I just said, if I want to cook, I will delay time. I have to go to attend also the evening uh, Kononia meeting. So I just look at sugar, put it in the water, drank. <laughs> Today we may not drink that because we have had too much knowledge on this uh, nutrition and all those things. But God helped me. God helped me. I, and I survived until after the evening fellowship, I came back and ate. So as I said, it's all commitment. The secret is commitment. If uh, we are committed, we would be able to do the work the way God wants us to do. So another nugget for you, brothers and sisters, if you are committed, you will be able to do the work the way the Lord wants us to do it. God bless you, Pastor. Yes. So after Sister Judy, um, when I came, I heard that there was Sister Mary. Sister Mary also came. But I don't know whether somebody else came, apart from Sister Julie and Sister Mary. Ah, B came to meet you. Yes. Uh -huh. So that batch also was also fine. B, Irene, and uh, Basau, and there were seven who came by yes, that time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they came on the uh, fire this up. So the, uh, the, the, the sisters fellowship was getting interested, interesting, mm -hmm. and then until now today, I mean, by God's grace, uh, uh, sometimes even I, I I ask myself, is these sisters when they were few, or we didn't have many, was it the blessed time, or this time the blessed because, because, uh, because uh, some of them, I mean, some of them, excuse me to say, even our own members' children. In fact, even some of the members, then they are bringing their children. They don't want me to see them. They don't want me to see them. They don't want me to see them. And if they do that, then the children come. They will not even... Uh, make me to see them and it pains my heart that uh, sometimes uh, they will be there and then when the child has already gone to do whatever then he did not come to tell me my son is here my daughter is here and, and, and some of our leaders children finish school before i realized so the question is was i going to keep them from Learning or no, I, I studied and I got a good class. I wish, like a uh, Moses said, all the all the people were prophets. Yes. Yeah, so 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 that's 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 uh, the painful part. Yes. But those who want us to, I remember one of our pastors in Kumasi. Even the child, if you bring him today, even at that time, I wouldn't know him. I didn't know him. The only thing I told him that my child was there. My boy was there. So the people around the place where whom they go to church with in town, I call them and say, Do you see it's not only one person? Do you see this boy? So I don't see him often. Do you see this brother? I said, I don't see him. This I don't see him. So the other I went to church and I said, My brother, your son, he's not coming to church. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you know that he couldn't he didn't accept that? Yes. I said, My brother. Even your son, if you bring him here now, I cannot identify him. So what? Do, why do you think I will tell lies on him? So that's why he did and he, Well, thank God he has finished school. He has taken his trouble away. So, 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 so we need to really step and uh, uh, come and step up all these things. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. In fact, um. What Pastor is saying is very important. Um, if you're a member of the church, your word is going to the university. The best thing you can do for yourself and for the child is to introduce the child to the Christian community. And by the grace of God, the fellowship has been there since 1984. So you can by all means find somebody at KNUST, at University of Ghana, at uh, University of Winneba, UDS, everywhere you will find at least a member there who you can entrust your child to his care or her care. By the grace of God, we were blessed all those four years on campus and for some of us five years were wonderful times. We, our spiritual lives were never the same. And the, when we have all night on campus, in fact, 
you know that you have prayed. We prayed. All those seven sisters who came in 2001, we prayed for them to come. And by the grace of God, they started coming their numbers. And now we have many sisters in the fellowship. So Pastor has shared with us the things that do not, one of the things that does not excite him uh, concerning campus work because we don't want, um, we don't allow sound or seasoned believers to keep an eye on our children. So let's learn from it. Let's beware because it's in our own interest. Now, Mommy, we want you to share with us some of the other things that makes the campus work a bit, um, yeah, not, not exciting as it should be, apart from that what you shared with us. That makes it exciting or not uh, uh, exciting? Not exciting, first of all. Okay. Um, it's really painful when you want to, you know, make sure that people make it to heaven. It's like you are treading on their freedom. You don't want them to dress the way they want to dress. And then and they will be telling you, even the food we want to eat, you want to tell us what food to eat and all those issues. But looking at our background and what we went through, I think uh, it wasn't a mistake they came to deeper life. God knew that that's where they are going to be well grounded in their uh, uh, Christian life because they don't know the purposes of why God sent them to KN University. So uh, there are a lot of things that are not pleasant. And then number one, um, compromises here and there. And then number two, um, this one thing, I don't like it at all. People who have said they are coming to church and then they are sleeping. <laughs> And sometimes also in the campus we are making something like uh, uh, if you're having a, a meeting, except food is provided, you see, uh, and then but somebody has to um, sacrifice and do something. Sometimes we also must know that we must have time to feed the soul. Yes. <laughs> so the ones that excite me is. Um, I love to be among the young, yes. the youthful. Yes. It really has a good effect on you. You see yourself as young. Yes. And um, the type of fellowship we have with them, uh, we make them to know that we are their mothers, both sisters and their brothers. And so knowing that we have the youthful people among us that we have to help them to make it in life because they are our hope for the next generation. And so it suggests me that God has brought me into such a situation to help to build up the lives of people so that at the end of their lives, they also can make it wherever they are. That alone gives me desire and hope to work more. You know, sometimes with this kind of desire, when you call them during the day, some of them, because we have a list for both brothers and sisters, and the sisters, we compile them. Sometimes around one, two, I'm sending messages to some of the sisters. Those I know they are having problems. Well, sometimes God will just lay it. And lo and behold, by 6 a.m., by the time I open my WhatsApp uh, online, they have responded. I didn't see you in church. They didn't come, oh, mom, I, I was sick. Why didn't they let me know? Okay, so we then come, I, um, look for people who will be able to follow them up uh -huh. so that kind of thing thing it makes me to be very happy working among the campus brethren god bless you mommy and your sacrifice and labor will never be in vain in jesus name amen so brothers and sisters we are on time with the generals and we are learning from our pastor and our mommy pastor you are an associate professor in agronomy, and uh, we believe that this is, it didn't just come. So we want you to tell us about what kept you on this trajectory. Uh, at what point um, did you decide that this is the path I want to tread? Because I'm not sure you, there were many people uh, around you or even in the church who, had, who were academics, 
Mm. So what what's really motivated you? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, number one, when I went to first year, I had a friend um, doing the task force days, and he, he told me that if I want to really start well and end well, the first years, the first second year is what is so much significant. So we put a lot of uh, emphasis on that, and we read, we read. We went to the lectures, we read, and by the grace of God, when uh, the results came, as I said, I had obtained a good class. And then, um, in fact, even um, I, right, even after graduation, I was not thinking of becoming a lecturer. Indeed, uh, there was a new farm that was started in Kokumau, which was just, then Yugoslavia back, government back farm. So three of us went there to do national service. But um, we studied the way the farm was being handled. We saw that uh, we would not uh, want to be there. So we, two of us came back. I came to, back to campus. And, and, and fortunately, when I came back, my supervisor spoke to the then head of department that well, uh, he was going to do this work with uh, since they are not in as our best student, we should bring him back. So we they brought me back to do the service there for two years. And as I said after that, it was during the service that my mind was coming back, coming to teaching and lecturing and all those kind of things. So when I finished the service and then they said they were going to appoint me as a, as a lecturer, fine. I mean, my mission was coming to pass. And then um, um, we, we picked the, the position. And then uh, we were there for one year, and then we were trying our hands on this, trying our hands on this, and uh, when this scholarship came. So, so I think uh, uh, that now increased my decision to become a, an intellectual. And we have not, we have not uh, rested. I mean, of course, we have to work hard. We have to work hard. And then uh, when we came back from PhD, um, started putting things together. I mean, my, my thesis, uh, I, over there I, I had one paper from it. But when I came here, I think I, think, I, think I had two or three extra. So uh, it was moving on. And then um, um, by the time I realized I had a basic something for uh, for senior lecturer and then when and then I'll see professor and uh, so so it you you must work yes. I mean <laughs> becoming senior lecturer lecturer senior lecturer I'll see professor and all those kind of it's not uh, just a lazy man's job yes. and uh, nobody you are not going to pay money for that you must the papers must be there before yes. even you submit yes. And there's not also submitting the paper, making sure that the papers are quality papers. When you go for assessment, you are going to make it. So, so it so we combine. Of course, the Bible has said that if any man does not work, let him know it. So the Bible does not encourage uh, laziness at all. And uh, where also God had God brought us also, we saw that as we have said. Uh, there are in Methodist, we had lecturers there, Catholic lecturers there, Pentecost lecturers there. So when they were looking for something, it was not difficult for them to to, to, to get through yes. uh, because of this man uh, behind them, this man behind them. So 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 I remember uh, the, uh, recently I went to what, what was I? What did I do? Uh, they said they went to they should come and. Uh, spray our our church there uh, uh, during the COVID when we wanted to go there. So I went to uh, Ufuri Krum, uh, this and that, we are under Ufuri Krum, uh, Missy Municipal. I had heard that the Municipal Chief Executive was a, a call and, what is it, a, a, a worker at Kane University. So when I went there and then I spoke with the man who was coming, they said, I told the ladies, can I see the, the, the yes. MC? Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and he 
this my colleague. I want to see him. So he went there. So when was so when you go tell him that Professor Sakode wants to see him. So he came back smiling. Then I knew that uh, I will see I will see her. So he, uh, he said, Madam says come. So I went inside. One man was there. I think he said his coordinator. Immediately I got there. He he went out. And then I sat down with him. I said, you, 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 were, you, were, you were troubling us in the, uh, he, uh, he was in the art faculty. We were troubling us in here, we were troubling. We have also come here. You say what? You say, I said, I need, uh, what is it? Sanitizers. I, I need sanitizers. I need a Veronica bucket. Oh, he just called somebody. Go and give this man some. Mm. So, 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 so you see, uh, by the grace of God, if we are writing this one, writing this one, writing, and people know that uh, these people are not just children. You know, deeper than they have already been telling, saying that we are children. Mm -hmm. We are magazine people. Mm -hmm. We are market people. But uh, I am thinking that uh, it's time for us to rise up mm -hmm. so that we have some of these people inside the church. Mm -hmm. uh, professionals, when it comes to something, we have this person there. We, when we are listening to these people, we say this is this, then they are, they are putting a great value on our church mm -hmm. instead of uh, the, so, so, so this is so, something that pushes by the grace of God and we have not stopped, we have not ended. Amen. Excuse me, we are still moving on. We are still moving on. <laughs> if I did, it's not, if not delay, I would have been full professor now. Mm -hmm. I, pro, I have submitted my thesis and my medicine since May 2000. 2018. Okay. Mm, I'm hoping that within the, one has come. I'm mm -hmm. hoping within the next month, two months, or at it's least to the end of the year. Mm, yeah. So we have not stopped. We yes. are moving, and we are challenging you people yes. that let's raise up the church that is has, doesn't have intellectual. I know. I know. Say, say intellectual. GS taught us quite recently, three weeks ago. Say not many, not many noble, but yes. some noble words. Yes. Just. yes. Let's mm -hmm. put, let's put the emphasis on that song mm -hmm. and have some of the nobles in the church. Yes. Pastor is challenging us. We need some of the nobles in the church. He said he worked hard. So definitely you have to work hard to get a first class. To get a first class in those days was no joke. Now you can find a number of first class, but to get first class in 1984, in fact, you needed to work hard. You needed to show that you were worth the soul. So, by the grace of God, a pastor has come this far. He said he wanted to be somewhere so that others can also pass through him and be blessed. And I remember those days, people would call and say, Okay, I have this daughter who is coming, got this. Uh, can you help us get a course? And he was going everywhere. Even if it's accommodation, he will go to every extent to help. I believe that inspired some of us. And by the grace of God, we have come this far. Pastor is challenging you, whoever you are, wherever you are this time, that you need to work hard so that you can also be somewhere that the people will not think that deeper life people are only magazine people or market people. We are also somebody to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor, we now want to find out how did you manage to balance all these academic this task of academic work writing a paper is no joke and uh, you start and something crops up you have to leave it and come back but you've been able to go through even to put in an application for promotion to a full professor plus the whole ministry of marriage and family life and then other responsibilities in the church and uh, i remember you've been on the marriage committee for a long time now and all this you manage to keep all this i'm sure even on the university campus you played one role or the other senior tutor and things like that mm. how do you manage to keep a balance well uh thank you my sister um i mean it's it's really that um as you are saying um we have to really try to put things together, for instance, uh, uh, we have to be serious and we have to know where we want to reach. 
Of course, I know that some of those days, when you come back, you know you are tired. I mean, to be frank, you know you are tired. But but Jesus said, when you start at when immediately he holds the Bible, you see that some new energy strength come upon him. You are tired, but you know your your aim, your aim, where you want to go to. And none of them should fail. The spirit, your own personal spiritual life that should not fail. The ministry should not fail. And the academic work should not fail. Like you said, you managed to do some work in the university, committee chairman, uh, hall master, senior tutor, and all the head, came to head of department team, and all those kind of things. I mean, you, you, you must plan and make sure that, well, you do, today you are going to do this one, you prepare for it, you do it excellently, you do this one, you do it excellently, and all those things. And, and God also was very, very faithful. I mean, very, very faithful. I mean, sometimes you, I tell God, God, I, I didn't prepare this message. I didn't prepare. I didn't have enough time to prepare. Not that of list, not because of laziness, mm -hmm. but because of this, as I said, this and this and this. You wouldn't have time to prepare. But immediately I take the Bible, I see that everything I need to say at that time, the Lord gives me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and for, for my lectures also, for instance, as you are saying it, of course, as you are teaching uh, year and year and year. In fact, I even postgraduates, when I'm when I was teaching post Not even reading through their nose, but God help. If we solve it, they ask questions, I answer them. Before in some of these things, he will never. And, and and thank God for like the voice quite recently. When I came back, he told me, call me to her office and say, please, as you have come, don't rest. Because there are some people, he pointed out one one of our, my juniors said, This man is here and if you are not very careful, you come and overtake him. You come and overtake him. So immediately he said that, started putting down these things, uh, uh, writing, 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 and then by God's grace I've come to where I am. You need to be uh, know where you are going, and therefore you put in all, all sorts of efforts. And, and by the grace of God, the grace is always there to to carry us forward. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor said, "You must know where you are going. You must plan, and then you <laughs> At that time, I was um, teaching the set. Even when I was pregnant and I had nursing, I, I was still able to get up and then go and teach. At that time, tech church, English church, from there, tree church, I was sick. They would come and call me. <laughs> that our teacher did it to prepare. So, please, sister, can you come and teach the tree church? And then I was going. Mm. So, what I would say is right at the beginning of my life, I, I made that clear distinction that God is going to be first in my life. And because of what I went through, uh, it's, it has to be God. Personally for me, when I was about 
That was my preoccupation. And like the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the uh, kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all oh, that things shall be added unto you. So uh, what helped me is making my priorities right, God first, and then his work, and then husband and family, children, and then my own career. I wasn't so much serious with my career, but as we went on, God also wanted to um, at least honor me. Church buildings for some time now, especially on Kapu Square, near two weeks ago, we discussed how to move our churches from the classrooms. And we, KNUSD also did not have a church building. For some, at least whilst we were there, there was no church building. So a few years ago, you started a campaign KNUSD must get a church building. And in record time, it was done. How did you do it? I, as for the building, I don't even understand. Of course, definitely God built it. To, to when we started all this, uh, this later on, we, had this, we, st we have been looking for the land. And then, in fact, I mean, when I came back from Britain, they have already started uh, the land acquisition fund. And then, um, so they were called, collect, doing some offering, offering there. So, uh, so when I came, so we were looking for land. We were looking for land, and I remember uh, one technician came to this. Uh, somebody told him, "Want to see the land?" And he said, "Oh, this land, fifty thousand, fifty thousand." I said, "Oh." For us, he will he will not even because so uh, I say fifty thousand that we don't have at that time. I don't think we have to we had twenty thousand from our land acquisition fund. So later on, one brother said he has been talking to he has talked with the chief uh, the uh, the brothers of the chief. And someone, another man, he said, There's love here. And I said, How much? He said, 30,000. I said, ah, Then 30,000 there, we can, we can still go. In. So we should go and look at it. Do you know that when in the same land, when they are about some months ago, this person said 50,000. So he said, 30,000. And I said, We need two plus. So Lo and behold, they, they brought the, they, we went to check the land and we said we like it. Because there was no land near the campus uh, this and, than that place. So we, we managed and then paid for the land. But when we paid for the land, I think the money remaining was not up to even 20,000. Mm -hmm. So we were doing little mobilization there, ourselves, sacrifice, and some, especially the non students in the church, very few of them. So we were doing that, and one day, Brother Jerry, mm. Ajit, we were talking and said, Oh, Pastor, we have this uh, WhatsApp platform. I want you to, I want to uh, introduce to you and bring you also be part. I said, That's fine. And then said they had even started, yes, they had started getting some, gathering some money 
to you know, uh, to, you know for the aim of bringing to Ken West the church. I said, then, then, then that's fine. So he introduced me to that. And then we started the, the building. At that time, we had already bought, and of course, we were very, very slow because the money was not coming. So by the grace of God, through the, that alumina platform, I mean, and of course I was talking, yes. but the Jesus said, you know how to collect money. I said, yeah, but yeah, if you don't collect the money, the people will chop the money themselves. God will not bless them. Yeah. They collect it, <laughs> and then the God will bless them, and they will collect and and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I and I said, I will never stop saying that whenever I talk about the building, that the building was built essentially by the alumina. Essentially about the alumni. And we say, of course, you were there operation this <laughs> cover up, operation beautify, beauty, operation beauty, operation this, <laughs> operation this. And and I thank God for, for the brethren. That's why this uh, uh, coming back to the question, earlier question you ask, we need these people in the church. We need them. Because the magazine people, we cannot use them much. The market people, we cannot use them much. Oh, so I thank God for every. So they were give. I mean, they were giving even sources. Even this brother, Doctor Broker, I was saying mm -hmm. he had left the church yes. far, far, far back here. And so ah, but you, you started at Cain West. You see, you know, we started the fellowship together. These days we are building church. Bring money now. We brought one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, this brother will say, oh, uh, then and and I'm not mentioning people against people, but there are people I cannot, brother. This brother still. When we did the estimate for the roofing, it was thirty nine thousand. He said, Pastor, I and my wife we are paying ten percent. Amen. So I didn't know, in fact, there were sometimes the money was so, coming so much that I didn't know how how things, how things God was working. I mean, those in diaspora, of course, I, if, except I don't hear. I, I hear them and, 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 and it was fantastic and it's still fantastic. And uh, thank God for that building. And it has saved us a lot. What was painful to me is that these maintenance people, they will go and arrange. When we were meeting at uh, the courtyard of Ira Integrated Science, Integrated Arts, they will arrange the thing in the evening, then the night they, it will rain. Mm. Sometimes some of the things will fall down, mm. water on the this thing, and when we finish, they had to also wait and bring. I said, God, when will this? These people came to learn. And so, so for the building there, we thank God, we thank God that all of you contributed, and I, I, I just praise God for the how He really. In fact, there are sometimes some money were coming that I say, Ah, oh God, these people they have money. Sometimes I, 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 I shouldn't burden these people. So, 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 my sister, if you ask that KUST building there. All that I will say to God be the glory. Amen. And then that we pray. my prayer is that every day God will bless everybody that has given to, to, to this work. And now we go there in our children church. When you finish, you don't have to start chairs, <laughs> carry them. And <laughs> meet you see my sister, Sister <laughs> Betsy. He just finished school last year. She was the decoration team leader, I think so. That sister, when we finish church like this, I think, and, and always I tell them that I it pains me as a pastor. When we finish, I just finish counseling and go. And these sisters will remain there doing some, oh. So the, I was teasing, I said, look at Sister Betty. Because there's no work to do now, when we close, he don't know, he doesn't know how to go. <laughs> but, but, but that goes is to the glory of God, to the glory of God, and, uh, and the people who really help. The National Church, National Headquarters brought two tranches of money. Once the church also provided some bags of cement. And even those who are not students, I, I go, go to... I leave the students go to their parents. Mm -hmm. We are building church for 
your children. children. <laughs> <laughs> what do they? I said, even though sometimes those whose children are not there, I said, your children are coming. Yes. When they come, where would they? So, so the enthusiasm was in the zeal. And thank God. Thank God for God. So I'm encouraging the other campus. So I know we took uh, this from Kivas. Kivas has a beautiful building there. And then um, that God will build. But Amen. let us know that majorly is the alumni. So the alumni network must be strong if we want to raise up a, a, a building Amen. in our fellowships. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say on the campus, KMC Church building. So the alumni network must be strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor also said that you must collect the money from the For people. Them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that God can bless them. So pastors, let's not and, think and, that... And Pastor was also giving. Let me mention that. I'll give. I'll give. I'll, I'll give. I'll give. For the church, I give. Yes. <laughs> I remember Pastor would say, Operation Cover Up. This month, I give my salary. So, <laughs> follow. <laughs> and then, <laughs> this is the Momo number. <laughs> and then the, the monies will be coming. Yeah, yeah, so, but, Pastors, don't give up. Don't think yeah. you're, you're overburdening your members. You're mm -hmm. giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. for God to bless them. Mm -hmm. So, collect the money and put it into the building. Let them see the building. And they will continue to give to the glory of and God. And let me chip in this. As you said, the last statement. You know, one of the things one somebody said. He said, he said, well, to God be the glory. He said, if I am collecting money for anything in the church, He will pay. He will pay. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, on you on the platform, every stage you were reaching. I take the picture, put it on the yeah. platform. So the people were seeing the physical money. work. But sometimes we collect the money and some need come and we use it to do that, to offset that need. Mm -hmm. But people will, will collect money for bars. And let's say some, some people, some, something happened, we use the money for that. People are not seeing the bars. Next time when we are collecting money for bars, they won't pay. Mm -hmm. They won't pay. Mm -hmm. They will pay. So if you are saying it, I want you to tell the pastors when money is collected for a purpose, to let the people give more. That pe that money should be used for that purpose, so that the people will see physically. And when next time we tell them you need another thing, they will give. Amen. 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 So this is for all of us, and this is the best strategy one can adopt to move our churches from the classrooms to beautiful edifices to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So Pastor, um, we want to know, uh, we, are, we, are, we are drawing down the curtain, your vision for the campus work in the region and uh, what we are doing to raise the next generation of campus generals who will also, be, who will also continue in the legacy of holiness, evangelism and heavy-mindedness. Thank you very much for that question. And, I, and, I, and I, as you read, rightly said, if everything ends with us, then we have not worked for God. And uh, number one, the little God has been teaching us, or we know, we are pouring onto the people by ways, by example, by sacrifice, by self denial. We are making the people to know this is the way. Work for it. And also, we, 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 we are not handling the work of laxity for serious hands. For the people to know that this is it, this is what they do, they want to do. And they do that. And thank God for this alumni, this technology that has come in. You know, I was telling my wife, they were saying the other time that this alumni is something you have started. We must continue. We must. That makes you to know where the people are. Of course, I we know that not all stay in the mm -hmm. church. Well, we, do, we are praying for them to come back. But that alumni network is very, very crucial mm -hmm. if we are to uh, make sure that we conserve the fruits. 
There are some of the brethren they finished school because we didn't follow the path because there was this there was nothing like this networking that have come. And they went to some place. Ah, one brother, mm. our, our sister. If I see that, I almost cry. There are some of the people when we finished school and we scattered. They were because there was no networking. They went and unfortunately, the, the world had swallowed them, swallowed them. So if you really want to really build an enduring kind of edifice, work with, uh, with the aim of the enduring work, we should not leave the brethren when they finish. And we as campus leaders, we should we should draw the people to ourselves even when they have finished school. And with this network system, let's put them together. And let them, like I told them, even if you finish school, I'm still your pastor. pastor. So yes. you better accept me yeah. <laughs> now. <laughs> so so let's do like that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, all the toils we are toiling on these people, you we'll meet Jesus, nothing to show. I think so the networking is very should be very, very seriously adhered to and and let them ask questions, help them hear that uh, this sister is marrying in that church. Go let's go there and let's uh, today yesterday I was glad one sister. We, we, during the final year, somebody brought a proposal from Tema. And I was Thought it, thinking that their sister is not much sure. But unfortunately, he kept, she brought yes. Well, yesterday or day, two days ago, she called me and said, I'm not going to marry. I said, ah, but what happened to the other, other, the first, first one? He said, oh, no, 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 I didn't continue. We, we should go. We should. Of course, we will not be able to go to everybody's wedding. But let's try. These are things that will make the people to know that we are still we are still in touch. Mm -hmm. So the, the the one of the secrets is that this alumni fellowship. Mm -hmm. Because if all our campus people imagine those who have finished Kilwas, Lagon, KNUST, and all the training college, nurses training college are still in the church. Mm -hmm. How beautiful it will be. Mm -hmm. So now that we have this technology, phone, WhatsApp whatever they call it, let's use it well mm -hmm. so that the people, we can monitor them mm -hmm. even when they finish school. So Pastor said we need to monitor the people even when they have left school. And now it is much easier to keep in touch. So let's share in their joy and whenever there is good news like marriage, naming ceremonies, let's be there. Let, let our presence must be felt so that we can remain in touch. By so doing, we will continue in this legacy of holiness, evangelism, and heavy-mindedness. And by the grace of God, we will all make it in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we go, Mommy, you give us your closing remarks. Just share something with us, finally, that we can go home with. OK, thank you very much, my sister. Um, but I would say is there's no better place to be like in deeper life. Mm -hmm. We have traveled out, gone somewhere, and then when I gave him my history, I've gone to places before. There's nowhere that I can liken it to deeper life. So I will encourage our brethren that they should make sure that they take hold of deeper life doctrines, whatever they do. Mm -hmm. They should adorn the doctrine of Christ and God will lift them up and help them. With all these difficulties in life, God knows his own people. And at the right time, God will lift them up. So they should hold on to the word of God. That's it. That's it. Be truthful to God, faithful to God, and God will help them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mommy has shared with us that if our life is the best place to be, it's incomparable. You cannot compare any other place with deeper life. No matter where you find yourself, identify with the brethren there, and by the grace of God, you will be prepared for heaven.
this is how far time will allow us and god bless you for joining us for time with the generals thank you mommy and thank you pastor thank you very uh, much. professor and mentor we are all following and walking in your footsteps so that we can also be there for others mm. as you have sacrificed and done for us you've also challenged us that we need to maintain the alumni network we need to keep in touch with our, bre our brethren no matter how many years they have left school so that we can all we can make sure that we are all together until we meet in heaven god bless you all and see you again next week with another edition of time with the generals amen amen, amen. so god we should bless you for joining us this evening for time with the generals i think it was a great honor to have had our pastor and um, our professor i believe he's, he was the first professor we have we've had in the church in ghana and um, it's been very enlightening and i hope that um, this is going to help reshape uh, the future of dlcf in ghana um, time with the generals will continue so next week join us we're going to have another overseer and the wife who will be here to share their own ministerial journey with us uh, we want to remind you that on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a very special edition of Fire Hour. Uh, this time it's going to be Fire Hour with the National Overseer himself, that through this platform he will be ministering to the whole country. So please um, join us uh, for that enriching time in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So God richly bless you and look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yes, at this point, We'll invite our pastor to pray for us and pray in particular for the campus ministry so that we're going to raise our future leaders who will take the campus church to the next level. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray? Our gracious Father, we thank you for this evening in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for what you have done already. We praise you. Everything is for your glory. You have done it well. And we give all praise. And thanks and adoration to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for these testimonies and other things that have been shared with the brethren here this evening. Pray that, Lord, this will motivate them, this will challenge them, this will encourage them, Lord, to reach the very zenith of where you want them to be in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I pray that, Lord, help us to destroy every form of mediocrity in our lives. Mm -hmm. That, Lord, we reach out to the farthest point we have planned for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. For believers, the Bible says we shall be head and not tail. We Amen. shall be above and never beneath. Lord, I pray, these brethren that have listened to this and all the other people, Lord, we will stretch forth until we are indeed really head and, and above only in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for our brethren, Lord, that they will know that wherever, wherever even they are, that is not late they can just increase the temple. They can just mm -hmm. increase the, the, the temple so that, Lord, you will do the rest in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Soul, spirit, body, academics, profession, every area, Lord, I pray, lift every one of them up in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Strengthen each and every one of them. And I'm asking, Lord, especially the teachings and the doctrines and the way of Christianity we have been taught in this church. I pray our brethren will not just uh, push them aside because pushing them aside means that they don't want the blessings of God. They will hold on to it as you have helped us. And Lord, I pray as they are faithful like that, you also be merciful and faithful unto them in Jesus' name. Mm. Academically, I pray every one of them will excel in Jesus' mm. name. Professionally, they will excel in Jesus' mm. name. And if Jesus tarries and years to come, Lord, as we also have this opportunity, we be able to share these great, great things you are going to do to them, with them, in them, for them, the people who are who will be following them. We pray that the vision will not die here, Lord, but it be fresh upon our minds every day to to strive to reach the best in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We thank you because you know that we are faith and answer that prayers, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 Amen.